this video. Do you know, you're trying to, you're trying to make a video and... Uh, Hello there, welcome to the Airgun Gear Show. I am in Las Vegas for SHOT Show 2023. This video is going to be my favorite things as I've been walking around, things I like the look of, maybe a bit of gossip of things coming up in the future, and a bit of chit chat with some well-known faces. But I'm gonna shut up now, let's play the tape. Please visit airgun101.com, the best place for the latest airgun videos from the best creators in the world. And if you want the latest goodies, please visit airgun101shop.co.uk. And this video is made entirely out of my own pocket. Here we go. Right, over on the new Caesar side, it's very plush in here, very pretty lighting carpet's a little bit thicker, we find the Element Optics stand, which is Element Optics stroke GRS. They've got a few things rather exciting to look at. I'm going to be lazy and not try and fudge my brain too much with technical knowledge early in the morning with a lot of jet lag. And I'm going to hand you over to Matt Dubber, who's going to show you a couple of very exciting things. In front of us here we have the uh, Element Optics Theos 6236 by 56 first focal plane and I know you've probably seen this before floating around on the internet, uh, it's kind of the worst kept secret of, of all time. Uh, we had some prototypes at, uh, at uh, ah, why have I gone blank now, oh, <laughs> RMAC, that we were using there and I've obviously put a few videos out hunting with it and stuff like that. Um, but finally we've got a chance to launch it at Shark Show and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. So I'll run through the, the features quickly. Um, this is very much a sort of a high-end scope, um, maybe out of a lot of people's budget, but we really didn't want to cut any corners with this. This is our, our new flagship. Um, we've got a 34 millimeter tube, 56 mm objective, and very chunky turrets. And the reason for this is we wanted to get uh, 12 mils per revolution, but still keep a nice click spacing which gives you that firm click feel um, which a lot of the sort of precision rifle and long range shooters are, are asking for. We've got exposed elevation turret, capped windage turret, but what we've done on the windage cap is that we are also including a thread protector ring with the scope which essentially protects the, the threads here around the windage when, you, when you're shooting with it exposed and it makes it look like it's not a capped windage that you just taken the cap off so if you want to leave it exposed you can and we allow for that and then on the other side it looks like there's no illumination here but there actually is we've got a digital illumination on the Theos you hold in the the logo plate which is a button to switch the reticle uh, the illumination on and then you can cycle through the 10 brightness settings by pushing it down so that's pretty cool if you don't want to shoot illuminated you can forget that it's even there and it's, you've just got a nice access to this whole uh, parallax knob and you get get nice and precise because of that larger diameter. The elevation turret itself we spent a lot of time working on some new mechanical features for the turret. For one the clicks are quite a bit firmer than we've got on some of the other models and that basically ensures that if you're shooting a match or if you are you know have this thing bouncing around the back of your truck it's not going to turn by itself it takes a bit of effort to actually crank it where you need it. But we've also got a revolution indicator here. So when you turn around to your second revolution, as you pass the 11 and you go onto the 12, 
the flag over here switches from one to two. And basically all that does is it prevents you from turning a full revolution and forgetting where you are. You can go into your second revolution, you can see clearly where you are. If you want to go back, it just flips back. You've also got a, a tool-free zero stop, and I know that some of our other models have tool-free turrets, but the zero stop requires um, an Allen key to actually set it where you want it. This zero stop is entirely tool-free. When you set the turret back, it automatically sets the zero stop five clicks below wherever your zero is, which is awesome. You literally do not have to carry a single Allen key in your bag to adjust your scope, which I think is great. What else can I talk about? 60, 36 times magnification, so that's a nice zoom range. Six times um, allows you to do some hunting or just get a good you know, peripheral vision of whatever you're looking at down range. And 36 times allows you to get really close on your target if you're shooting bench rest or if you're just zeroing your scope and you want to spot those tiny bullet holes, um, you're going to be able to do that. And the ED glass and the brilliant optical system in the scope means that even at that 36 times, you're not sacrificing any quality. It's going to be crystal clear, very little chromatic aberration. And I guess the last thing we can talk about is the fact that we actually include what's called an aperture ring with a Theos, which is a uh, aluminium ring which reduces your objective diameter from 56 millimeters down to 40 millimeters and I know you might wonder why on earth would you want to do that um, surely a 56 mil is big for a reason yes it is with this zoom range all the way up to 36 times you need that 56 mil objective to actually gather enough light in low light conditions to see your target clearly however if you're shooting in bright conditions there is a benefit to actually reducing your objective diameter and the benefit is that yes you might lose a bit of light by doing that but you sharpen up your image a little bit because the light that's coming into the, the outside edge of your lenses which has to be bent at a sharper angle you now take that out of the equation which means less chromatic aberration less fringing slightly sharper image but it also increases your depth of field so if you're shooting a prs match and you want a deeper depth of field so that when you switch from target to target, you don't have to fiddle around with your parallax too much. The aperture ring allows you to see a little bit more in focus at any given time, and that's got its own benefit. So essentially with a scope, you're getting, it's almost like having two scopes. You've got a 6 to 36 by 56 and a 6 to 36 by 40 all in the same box, which is something that most scope manufacturers aren't doing and we're doing it as standard out the box. So that's really cool. The Theos is made in Japan, so you're gonna get that sort of tier one quality when it comes to uh, not only mechanical construction, but also um, optical performance. And we've worked with an engineer from Germany on all the mechanical components to get the material and hardness specs uh, that we need to get that sort of uh, German tier one mechanical performance as well. Um, the flip caps that you see on the scope are, are not included. Uh, we offer that as an aftermarket part because they do cost quite a lot and not everyone uses them. Um, but the aperture ring, that is included and it's threaded on both sides. So if you want to put it between your scope and your sunshade, you can do that. If you want to put it at the end of your sunshade, you can do that. If you want to put flip, Tenebrax flip caps on the outside, you can do that. It's, it's quite modular. So that's the Theos and we've got something even cooler to show you as well. So this is a whole different beast. I don't think anyone's really done something like this before, but this is an optical scope. In other words, you're looking through glass all the way from here to here. There's no cameras, there's no viewfinders that you're looking at a pixelated image, none of that. It's an optical system with, with ED glass, but we've got a digital reticle that's projected into your focal plane. And what that allows us to do is, I mean, the sky's the limit. We've got the option through the Element Ballistics app, which connects by Bluetooth, to choose your own reticle. You can choose a mill reticle, a MOA reticle. You can choose a simple crosshair. Can, you can draw your own reticle and upload it, which is insane. But we've also got data that's projected into your peripheral field of view with uh, stuff like your, your cant, your incline angle, ballistic data, elevation windage in mill or MOA. Uh, all kinds of things. You may notice that there's no elevation and windage turret. The reason for that is that on the Element Ballistics app, we've allowed you to input all your ballistic data. So you can, there's up to four profiles. You can enter the bullet you're using from a database, or you can enter your own bullet, your own BC, your own muzzle velocity, your own scope part, all the stuff you normally put into a ballistics app. But instead of then getting a firing solution and dialing it into your scope, all you do is you send your profile to the scope the scope stores the profile and once you're on that profile you can 
you can enter a range either by dialing your range in with this knob on the top so you can look in your scope and see okay let's dial it into let's say 250 yards you dial it in and you can physically see a dot in the scope on your reticle shift to where your predicted point of impact is going to be or you can connect via bluetooth to a laser range finder like this one which you zero for the scope you put the laser range finder in a little box that's on the actual display itself that where you can hold that box over your target you hit range you'll see your your range in in your field of view inside the scope and you'll see your reticle shift to where your point of uh, impact is going to be so that's something that is really going to change shooting you don't need to know um, minutes of angle or milliradians anymore all you need to know is the ballistic data for your your actual rifle and the scope does the rest of it for you um, we are also working on handhold rangefinders so if you don't want to use a module like this you can range a target with the handhold rangefinder it will send the data over to the scope and the scope will correct for you um, but what's cool about the system is you know in the past with any other scope you would need to take a kestrel or uh, your phone get atmospheric conditions like temperature humidity and pressure and actually take that into account well this scope has sensors for that built into it it's got thermometer barometer and humidity sensors in it and in real time it actually adjusts for that so if you wake up early in the morning it's freezing cold and your muzzle velocity is a bit lower and the air is a bit denser and then it changes throughout the day you don't need to worry about remeasuring that along the way this will do it for you and yes you can dial in windage just push a button on the side it switches this dial to windage mode and you can dial in your windage left or right and you'll see that point of uh, predicted point of impact shift from left to right as well so it's an awesome setup and um, we're going to continue to evolve this even after we launch it we can do uh, uh, firmware updates we can add features to the app we can add um, compatibility with other devices like kestrels and stuff like that so really the sky's the limit once you've bought it it doesn't mean that you're stuck with the scope it's going to keep evolving and keep getting better which is which is insane the future is very bright this is a prismatic scope it's a seven times prismatic with ed glass which keeps it nice and small but what makes this unique is most prismatic scopes don't have parallax adjustment this does so you can parallax all the way down to 10 meters which makes it usable for air rifles and rim fires um, and the other cool thing is because there's no erector tube inside here that's got to move around like a normal mechanical scope we've got so much space in here where we can actually get that incredible field of view so although it's a seven times scope we've got the field of view of it's closer to like a three or four times traditional scope which is awesome and the, the eye relief on this um, some prismatic scopes have very short eye reliefs you've got to put it right against your eye this one's further out so that allows you to put it on on firearms as well um, so it's kind of an all-purpose scope and uh, we expect it to be used with pretty much anything since you can adapt it to whatever you're shooting at the scope will come with uh, multiple mounts of different lengths which allows you to kind of adapt it to get the the eye relief that you need for your particular rifle um, it will also come with this ND filter in the front which essentially on really bright days you can pop it down and it will darken your image slightly to allow you to see your reticle a bit better um, and it does also take a triple a battery we, the reason we went to the triple a is that it's a battery you can find i mean you can be hunting in the backwoods somewhere you can pull into a random gas station and they will have triple a batteries and battery life is something you don't need to worry about because this this unit draws so little power being a hybrid scope and not a fully um, electronic scope that i mean we've had this thing on for like four days now we haven't even switched it off in four days and the battery's still at like 90 percent so this thing will literally run for weeks continuously and um, you hardly ever need to replace the battery so that's awesome this uh, rangefinder module on here we realize not everyone wants to use something like this you might want to shoot it thousand yards plus in, in which case this probably won't reach out that far so this will be sold as a separate unit um, you'll be able to buy this as an element uh, range finding module and obviously as I mentioned earlier we will be uh, working on handheld units as well that will connect to the scope here on the Rexamex stand there's two or three things to show you there's this one here for a start now this is called the meter meter now the thing to remember with Rexamax is that when it comes into different countries the names actually might change these are kind of like catalog names for shows so just be aware of that but I'm going to call this the meter for the moment and what are we looking at here well we're looking at a an aluminium construction so it's not too heavy actually it is actually really quite nice and light starting at the back We've got 
an adjustable bipod look, so up and down, and you've got gonna have a little bit of left and right on there, so you've got like a nice bipod on the back. Just there, that looks like a hammer spring adjuster at the back. And then here you've got a transfer port adjuster for your power. I think magazine size is going from 177 to 225. I think it's 14, 12, and 10. Okay, but I'll put the specs on the screen because um, I'm not always that good with numbers. So you've got that. Then you've got a regulator gauge at the back. No externally adjustable regulator, but you've got um, the regulator gauge there anyway. Coming down the front, you've got a side lever cocking system, which I'm told can go from right to left, and I can see where you can do that there as well. You've got different style pistol grips. I'm not too sure if that's like an interchangeable grip, uh, sort of like adapter, like an AR adapter there. Um, but it looks like it, so let's just go with that at the moment. Bladed trigger, forward safety switch, it's a nice side lever action. You've got the top rail, and they've added side rails, side pick rails, so that you can put your toys on the side. 260 air cylinder, I'm going to read the numbers on the side. 260 cc air cylinder, which fills to 250 bar. And you've got a pressure gauge on the front. 480 barrel length, so if I'm looking that, I'm guessing that some of this is a shroud. There's going to be a bit of a shroud in there, just looking at the length. And you've got a pick rail underneath. I got to say, that's very nice. You know, I mean, Reximex, popular brand, doing really, really well. And they're coming out with all sorts of nice new stuff. So that's that one. And there are different colours here on display. There's like the FDE one, and then I can see there's like a greeny coloured one there as well. I don't know exact final colours, uh, you're going to have to ask your local dealer or, or your importer in, in whatever country you're in, but yeah, that looks, that looks really, really nice, really nice and pointable, and yeah, nice looking gun. Depending on which country you're in, depends on kind of what the name of this is, but in the UK I know it's called the Ixis, Ixis. well they call it the, the throne just for the catalogue, so like I say, names will change depending on where you are in the world but what they've done is they've shortened the barrel so this is now a compact version so therefore you've got a compact carbon bottle on the front and if i turn and look at the crib sheet because i can't remember everything it's going to tell me exactly how long that barrel is and that barrel is if i look at the right sheet 38 centimeters so 380 mil so they have shortened that right down and i'm guessing that, that is a uh, actually, I've looked at the crib sheet again. It's a 0 0.30 litre bottle, 250 bar fill carbon bottle. Um, so yeah, so that, I mean, these have been very popular uh, in the past year. Of course, you know that you've got, you know, hammer spring at the back, transfer port magazine. You've got a little, um, power, uh, a little power wheel there at the side. So again, you know, very nice uh, looking gun from last year and they've simply made it a bit shorter with a smaller bottle. And finally, if you like bright colours, this is the Reximex, well, it's the, the catalogue name is the Daystar. Um, I think it's the Pretensis in the UK. Look at that. They've gone all colourful on it, so you can get all sorts of different patterns now on that stock. And I have to say, one of my favourite stocks still is that blue one up there, uh, which I've seen before, but I still think it's very, very nice. But there we go. So uh, they're experimenting with, I would say that's dipping or something like that. But it looks very good and it certainly stands out on the stand. While I'm stood here, let's cover what you would call the elephant in the room. That's kind of me at the moment. Um, everyone will say, where's the prices for the retail? Okay, SHOT Show is a trade show. So what happens is, is people come along here and the retailers do business here with distributors, the manufacturers do business with the retailers, distributors, etc., etc. And because it's a worldwide thing, there isn't like a particular one set price for the whole world. So you've got exchange rates, transport costs, everything like that. So there is no point in me saying something costs a dollar when you get sort of like two months down the line and it's actually costing $1.35 because everyone will just complain. So the internet brought you here 
Uh, you've all got keyboards or ability to search. Have a look because you will find local prices from local dealers. But it's pointless me quoting, and that's why you find as you go around, everyone will give you a ballpark figure. It's because of costs of moving things around the world and stuff like that. So there you go. Do a do an internet searchy thing and I'm sure you'll find the price when they're released into the shops. Okay everyone, I'm on the Element Optics stand and I found Johan Axelsson uh, and he's doing Element Optics stuff here this weekend but he's agreed to show something a little bit exciting which might be appearing a bit later in the year. First of all, good to see you. Good to see you. What have you got? Yes, this is a radar chronograph. Okay. That will tell you the ballistic coefficients and everything that you need to know about your rifle. It will give you readings, massive velocity and different readings at different ranges, so 25, 50, 75 and 100 meter ranges. It will yeah. be working between 400 and about 4,000 feet per second. It will be coming with a battery life of about 12 hours and it will be chargeable with a USB-C outlet. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is obviously, don't get me wrong, there's another brand on the market that does exist yeah but this is obviously a step up it's a more compact unit fully rechargeable it's got more information coming out on the main screen yes um, and they're a lot more compact yeah we do have really we do have an app for it as well so you'll be able to get your short strings and everything converted to your phone yeah and uh, the main thing that we wanted to do with this product is make it easy to use. Okay. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible for end users to use it. So yeah. I think we've done a good job of it and it will be a lot easier to use than other similar products out there. Now I know through little spots of it in the last year or so that this has been under test. Yes. A lot of people have been using it to get it set absolutely right. Yep. And it does some incredible things. And yes. Particularly that, that 12 hour or roundabout that battery life. You can just charge it up, put it down on your table, and just shoot, shoot, shoot. Yes. And it comes uh, with a case as well, standard. Mm -hmm. So the foot here is also the lock as well. So if you want to put it in your bag, you don't have to have a separate uh, case for it. Okay. So we try to think about all the issues that could be there and try to make the product as smart as possible. Yeah. Um, that is, that is look at that, that is really clever, so that's a full radar chronograph system out yes. 400 yards, Yes. and it's the size of what we would call a small sandwich box, or a, do you remember the old days when there was VHS video cassettes? Yes. It's about that size. So that's going to link to an app on your phone? Yes. Kind of similar to the chronograph app that's already out Yes, there. exactly like that chronograph. But there will be a few more options there to be able to get more information on your phone. Okay. It will give you actual reading of the BC, of the projectile you're shooting, yeah. as well as giving you the foot pounds and such things on screen as well. Okay, I don't know how to do that. As it's still, this is very well thought out, these little clips. And the BC factor yeah. for shooters is just huge. Yeah, you'll be able to tell, especially when you're tuning an air gun yeah. or doing your own loadings. You'll be able to tell if you destabilize the pallet, slug, or bullet okay. as well. So it will be giving you good readings that is very much necessary when tuning your rifle. And I'm not seeing what you would call like a, a trigger point. So kind of always on the system. Yes. So it's just on. Yeah. You don't need any sound or anything like that to trigger it. So it will catch up anything. Like you don't have to worry if you have a silenced U2, yeah. silenced air gun, or anything. It will catch everything. So that should right. be no problem. And you've obviously got this little bit on the top, which I guess helps yeah. you point it down range so you know where you're going, because you don't want to be shooting that way and have it going over there. No, exactly. The, the readings will be better and better the straighter it is compared to your rifle, mm -hmm. but it will read in an eight degree angle. Uh, so this little eyepiece, eyepiece here is just to make certain you aim it towards the same target it's shooting at. And would you put it to the side of your rifle, sort of? Uh, this will actually read uh, quite a good uh, different ways. Okay. So you can put it you need to have a clear sight between this one and target. Okay. So you can keep it by the muscle, by the side, slightly behind you. It will still do the readings. It just have to be clearly uh, in the line okay. of sight of the target. Right. So you basically you want the projectiles to go through the radar beam. Yeah. And then you're going to get a reading. Yes, exactly yeah. like that. That is fantastic. Nice clear screen on the back. You see there? 
yes. rubberized buttons so you can move, move it around so I guess it looks like it's good for all weathers. Exactly. Yeah. And we want to have the buttons here so you don't have to use your phone. You're able to use it without your phone or anything okay. like that. So if you, I know there are some guys out there that don't like the smartphone thing and they just want to simply have a screen on the back of the device. Well, that's, that's what you've got. Yeah. It's the 12 hour or nip. I mean, you say 12 hours. I mean, it's it's if you leave it permanently on and you're shooting a semi-automatic gun for two hours in a row, you're probably going to get a little this. Probably like that. But if you use it in a normal way, yeah. we're expecting to be slightly above 12 hours actually. Okay. And if you have a power bank with you, it's a standard USB-C cable, so it's super easy to have, even longer battery life if you feel that it's needed. That is, that is so compact. Look at that. So compact. And I can tell you that sort of like, because it's on, yeah. as I wave it around, it's giving me readings of how fast I'm doing it. So it's clearly working incredibly well and very yeah. sensitive. That's fantastic. When do you think the world might see that? We're looking to have it launched in April. Uh, okay. It's a soft date for now, but we think that we're going to be able to make that. Okay. And is that pretty much a finished looking product or do you think there's going to be any more changes? There will be some visual changes, but nothing major. Okay. Uh, there's a few small decisions left to be made. All right. So you're probably looking at a final concept, you know, yeah. or bar a tweak or so. Um, no, that is fantastic. Yep. Do we cheekily ask the price or not? It's going to be announced within the next month or so. Okay. I asked. I asked. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, it looks superb. I know it works because I've actually seen it working in different environments. And the stand idea is great. Yeah. I think that's going to be a real winner. Um, I hope so as well. Clubs, ranges, dedicated shooters at home. Fantastic. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Thank you. Jan, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Take care. Thank you. I've made it to the Air Force stand. Um, I've got to admit the old legs are giving way a little bit now. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to have a little bit of help. I'm going to let Tom give you a run through on what's new here. And also we're going to have a chat with Justin and Rossi from American Air Gunner. And I'm going to have a sit down. What's happening guys? Tun Jones here at the Air Force Air Guns booth. Showing off the all new, brand new Talon Bolt. This is an arrow gun shooting a 400 grain bolt. Actually, the bolt is 300 grain, shooting a 100 grain field point at over 400 feet per second. That is 122 meters per second. That is 20 meters faster per second than your standard hunting bow. Yeah, I did the conversion rate. I'm here for you. I love you all. Don't ask me to do that again. I did that with my shoes on. It is absolutely amazing. Love it. The bolt itself actually is glow in the dark veins so those people that are hunting at night for like when we here in the u.s hunting hogs can take down pigs you can actually recover your bolt they glow in the dark it has a hit marker which is right here you can actually tell if you had a hit or miss and it is the only adjustable arrow gun on the market that being said what you do is you change out this orifice with the standard air force ring lock kit so what you do is you remove it. Now you can take it from 400 feet per second. You can bring it down to 300 feet per second or even lower with the ring lock kit just by changing out that orifice. All right there in an itty bitty package. And you no longer need 3000 PSI. This gun right here runs off of 2000 PSI. No other air gun on the market in the air bolt category runs off of 2000 PSI except for the Talon Bolt. That's what makes us stand out beyond the rest, and that's why you need the Talon Bolt from Air Force Air Guns. Oh yeah, right here. Wanting to show off the all new, brand new Micro Hunter. This thing is absolutely amazing, available in 177, 22, and 25. Now sticking off the 22 cal numbers, you can expect right about 50 shots in the 22 cal. So that being said, 177, you'll get a little bit more. 25, you'll get a little bit less. You got a 210cc bottle. And let me tell you, this right here is going to be your ultimate truck gun. You got to get one because inside here, you have the bark stripper. It is adjustable, tunable, and threadable. Yep, you can add your moderator. You got to get it. All new from RAW. 
right there. You're gonna love it. And of course, a few other brand new things coming from Air Force and RAW, like the Masterpiece Arms chassis, the Sabre Tactical chassis, the Slug Press, and the Rock Lock Stabilizing Kit. Not only for air guns, but center fire rifles. We're coming out with everything new and innovative from Air Force and RAW. You gotta check us out. With this all new amazing Rock Lock Kit, what it does is this system actually hangs underneath your gun. And this is a dampening recoil absorber. You can actually see this weight move up and down. So when this is hanging below your gun on a Picatinny rail, it forces your gun to hang gravitationally level. So if you have your gun canted left or right, it'll actually force your gun to straighten out, which helps your scope and everything else stay on target level so you're no longer off or leaning left or right, it'll pull you center. And it'll help you stay on target. So when you pull your trigger and you get barrel jump, especially on big bores, it'll actually keep your gun on the deck, on your shooting bench, and weight your system down. And that makes a big deal for people shooting big bore and longer range. It keeps your gun on the table, keeps you on target, and you can see further down range and watch your point of impact. And having that recoil absorber, so when you have that gun and you sometimes on the big boards, you'll actually feel it kick back, that dampener right there will absorb that recoil. So it helps you with being on target, helps absorb everything, dampens it, weights your gun down, and anything to take any shock out and longer on target, the better off you're gonna be. This right here is one unit, and this is one unit. So you can actually take this off and move it to anywhere there's a Picatinny rail on your gun or put them in line. Very modular, build your own system, and each system comes in an eight ounce block. So you can build onto it, move it around, and set it up to what makes you a better shooter and helps out to what you want to do. Go. Oh, come on, come on. This hello, is hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, guys? Rossi here from American Air Gunner. The man, the myth, the legend. Justin from Utah Air Guns. From Utah Air Guns, the creator, the mind. We're the team that's really going to take air guns into the future, and that's what we're here to talk about. Am I right? Like Straight two, up. We're, we're, our goal is to take over <laughs> the world and make sure that every single human being knows the power, the fun, the excitement, and the pleasure of what you can do with an air gun these days. Absolutely. And this is the place, yeah. right? How many, how many things have you seen already? And this is day one, so we haven't even gotten around but I mean, there's already some very innovative stuff out there. There is. There's a lot of new stuff. I, and I hadn't heard much buzz about it. Uh, coming into the show, but yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff that I didn't know we'd see coming out. So that's... I mean, big thing, obviously, we're seeing more arrow guns, uh, which are coming, which actually I think are great because I would rather, the arrow guns and big game hunting, it's like a guarantee, right? I mean, sometimes with the slug, it's like, was it a perfect shot, was it not? But you rip that arrow thing at, at 500 feet per second, it's like every animal takes like two steps and then done. Right, right. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. Chasing animals is the worst. It's the worst. This guy. You're saying, He's more of a shooter than a hunter. I'm, that's, that's not true at all. I got started in this game <laughs> from hunting, but probably true too. Ah, that's okay. Now, here's what you guys need to know. If you don't, if you're not hunters, there's plenty of guns out there that you can go and buy, get them sighted in, and then come to RMAC, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge in Utah this year. Because if you haven't been, you have to come. It's one of those you need to experience it once in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's got to be I, I believe the biggest air gun competition kind in the world. In the world. So yeah. Um, you know we give away over a hundred thousand dollars cash prizes on top of. Damn. Seriously. Hundred grand, maybe. Golly. Yeah. I thought the air gunner challenge was exciting because we gave away yeah. twenty five. It's, it's just still exciting. I mean, it's really it is exciting. exciting. About a hundred grand. Damn. Well, I mean. <laughs> you know. Hundred grand, is a, it's got a nice ring to it. And the good news is, I've been uh, every year and have yet to walk away with one penny. So, more me of a hunter, really, hey, me a, really more of a hunter than a shooter. <laughs> yeah, I've been there every year and I've, I, you know, I, I think I've only does. spent about four million, but, you know, I'm sure it'll come back someday. Yeah, one day. No big it's deal. For you, it's, for the, we, it's for the folks at home. We're like, <laughs> we're just giving back to you guys. Yeah. So, that's what's on your agenda. You have 
the new hunting season of American Air Gunner right now airing for, for all year long on the Sportsman Channel. You've got the Air Gunner Challenge new season coming up in July. You've got the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge coming up in June. June, bro. June. June, June 14th. June 14th. Oh, so the, see, sorry, I didn't mean to leave you hanging. No, June 14th. And then the Air Gunner Challenge started in July. So your year of air guns, it's the year of the air gun, 2023. Get on board. Get on board, because we got stuff for you every month. We do, every month. There's matches every month going on. You got the, you even have uh, NRL 22. Yeah, that's growing. Air guns are in. Now, hear it here first, PRS 22 Rimfire. We are in with air guns this year. Really? Which is a big, big deal, yeah. So That's actually huge, um, that's huge news. It's a great huge deal news. for the air gun industry because we get to we get to bring a lot more people in that aren't just the same air gun crowd, the same right. people. Uh, this is a whole new audience and um, they're starting to realize like, hey, these air guns are the real yeah. deal, right? So, Opportunities for everybody. Yeah, so it's good, it brings in a new audience, builds the sport for everyone mm -hmm. and, uh, and it makes innovation happen. So we get to see like cool stuff every year because yeah. this stuff happens. So like this thing right here behind me. Look at yeah. this. Crazy. Anyway, that stuff. that's it. Go to Utah Air Guns. Go to AmericanAirGunner.com. We'll give you everything you need in the air gun world. And if you can't find it there, obviously you can go to Air Gun 101. And all the above. And all the above. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here on the JSB Predator Stand, SHOT Show 2023. Let's work along the little line of celebrities here. So we've got Airgun Angie, all G... Uh, the, gateway to Airguns? That's it, Gateway to Airguns. Very well known, puts lots of content out, all sorts of bits and pieces, so please go and check her out. You've also got Joe. You're the model, aren't you, really? <laughs> The, no, he's the Lord I of don't. Lead. I am the Lord of Lead. Yeah, what we call uh. the, 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 the talent is what we were the talent. So, and we just we just all met up on the stand, so we thought we'd just do a bit of bit of bit to camera. So let's start with Angie. How's it going with you? Going well. Going yeah. Well. Second time at Shot Show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I just came here to see Joe. That, that's it. We walk a bit. True. Joe. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. And so we're on the pellet stand. So let's just yes. do a pellet question because that's not. Favorite hunting pallet? Hades. Hades. What caliber? Oh, 25. 25? 25, yep. 25 okay. all day. 25 all day. So yeah, so you go for that, you go for that middle, middle of the road sort yep. of thing. Yeah. Still get squirrels without blowing their entire heads up and bodies, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you? Uh it depends. No, okay. no. lately Make it's a decision. <laughs> lately it's been the 177 knockouts. Yes? Yeah, no, they will now. It's been the knockouts for me. Yeah. Um, Tens or thirteens? The thirteens. Right. They are phenomenal at distance. Yeah. I've got to remember we're talking American power here a little bit. Yes, we? we are. You don't shoot the the best power, which is sub twelve in the UK. No. No, you you, you just go all out for just raw power. Well, I have a one seven seven that's geared at twelve at twelve sub right now, and it's okay. I'm shooting the Hades in one seven seven and the Polymags in one seven seven. Right. And that's been pretty effective. Lovely. Yeah, they are good. And I'll ask myself my own question. Giles, what's your favorite hunting pallet? And I'd go probably 2-2 two, two Hades yeah. because of the, the power thing. It works very, very well. It works as good as the 15.89. Right. And with the sub-12 side, it works. High power works well as well, but I just prefer the 2-2. Two, two. There we go. So there we go. We've, that. we've answered that question. <laughs> Let's done that. So how's things with you? So. What's, what's been a highlight for you this year? Um, I've been able to do tons of hunting. And yeah. The Gateway to Air Guns has been, it, we just started it last year and it's taken off really well. And yeah. I get to do lots of grip reviews on whatever guns anybody sends me. And yeah. Just a lot of shooting, a lot of trigger time. And your videos go out, I think, over the weekend that you tend to post sort of like on a Sunday somewhere? Saturday. Um, Sa we have been doing Wednesday and Saturday, but yeah. I think we're going to dial it back to just Saturday for a little okay. bit. Right. So, now, I know that because obviously you're on 101 and I see your notifications pop up in our system that says new video. So everyone on, on YouTube or 101, go and check Angie out because the videos really are, they're entertaining, they're educational and you're going to learn a lot. So please do go and have a look. There you go. And you, well, this is, <laughs> this, 
There's no hope in you, is there? No, there's honest. no hope. There's no. no help. There's no hope. Yeah. There's just no need sometimes. No, no. No, that's how I saw you turn up in that Mustang at oh, Armac. That was it. Hey, that was, that's my car. Is that your car? <laughs> that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a Camaro. <laughs> he knows the color it was, right? Body mag red. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was, yeah. I, I gotta say, yeah, no, they're very nice. Really good in a straight line. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we won't get into cars and which side of the pond makes better ones. <laughs> it's a different story altogether. But anyway, there you go, guys. That's us on JSB Predator. Um, we'll move on. Well done. Here we are then, uh, the Hatsan booth. Well, it's actually more than a booth. It's kind of like a huge temple of air guns look. And without doubt, they win the award for the most plush, comfortable carpet at SHOT Show. It's very nice. I'm going to cheat again because I can't remember all the facts and figures, as you'll find out a lot in this video. I'm going to hand you over to Seesaw and he's going to tell you about what's new from Hatsan in the USA. And do remember everyone that Hatsan have got a new distributor in the UK, which means that lots of their products are also going to be available to the UK market. Here's Cecil. Hello, I'm Cecil from Hatsan USA. Um, today we'll go through some of the new products. So we'll start off with our Zada here. So this is a entry brake barrel. It's going to retail for about $119. Available in 177, 22, and 25 caliber. Comes with a bundled 4x32 scope. We've got this nice PRS style, um, PRM style stock on it. It's textured, so you got a good tactile grip on it. The pistol grip's designed, so you get a good location on the trigger. Um, and it's just, you know, your basic Springer, um, but a nice little accurate, fun little gun. And then right here we have the new Factor BP for bullpup, obviously. Um, this is available in 30 and 35 caliber. Um, it has a 32 inch barrel. And with that 32 inch barrel and the 250 bar fill, we're getting about 144 foot pounds of energy out of both 30 and 35 calibers. So you've got an adjustable regulator right here in front of the block. You've got your bottle fill pressure, your regulated pressure, and then you have a hammer spring tension adjuster right here. So you can really tune it to whether you're gonna be shooting uh, slugs or pellets, you can uh, adjust the regulator and the hammer spring to get that just that right velocity and consistency that you're looking for. So you can adjust this to run pellets for bench rest and slugs for PRM or for predator hunting, whatever, whatever you'd like. Um, you also have an adjustable pistol grip. This pistol grip will move forward and backwards. It's got three positions for the size of your hand, so you can get that proper position on your trigger finger. You also have an adjustable trigger shoe like on the Factor RC, so it adjusts left and right and uh, up and down. And then, of course, as most of our high-end guns have, it has our Quattro trigger system, so you very adjustable. Um, you've got a Picatinny rail under the bottom, and like on the Factor RC, you have a removable carbon fiber bottle, so you can swap bottles if you want. QE shroud and threaded muzzle for a moderator. Um, and lastly, adjustable butt pad for elevation and angle. And the uh, cheek riser is adjustable to get that right proper cheek ride, or proper cheek weld for your scope. And finally on this wall, if I can fit this in the the lens there. Um, we have the pile driver, which you've seen the pile driver before. We have 45 and 50 caliber, and I've taken white tailed deer, black bear, all sort manner of big game in North America with this. Um, this year we have a 62 caliber version. So pushing a 650 grain hollow point or a 700 grain solid at um, right about 700 to 750 foot pounds of energy. So this is definitely capable of taking anything in North America. Um, African game, uh, this will do the job right here. Um, it shoots a big heavy slug and creates a lot of blood loss. So that way you get a nice clean kill on elk, deer, um, any large game that you'd like to hunt. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the Jet. The Jet is our pre-charged pneumatic pistol or carbine 
comes with a carbine buttstock. Just clips onto the back here. If I can push the button. Clips onto the back just like that. So you can have it as a carbine or a pistol. Adjustable for your length of pull. You also have an adjustable cheek riser on this. Has 11 millimeter dovetails on the top so you can add an optic. If you don't want to add an optic, it has fiber optic sights. You have two rear fiber optic sights. One, this one here is intended for pistol use. Flip that down and use this one here for when you're using it as a carbine. That makes it easier to focus on your sights without just being too close to your eye. Um, and then you can just flip it down if you're using it as a pistol or leave it up if you want to, if that helps. Um, you also have Picatinny rails on either side of the air cylinder here. It's a 40cc, 250 bar air cylinder. So you get about two magazines worth of shots out of it on each fill. So in 177, you have eight rounds per magazine, 22 is seven rounds per magazine, and 25 is six rounds per magazine. So just multiply that by two and that's how many shots you get. So 12, 18, and, and the other one, <laughs> 14. <laughs> I gotta say, see, so it's, it's it's a bit of a long day for maths, isn't it? It is, it is. It is. You know, you go through these numbers so many times. <laughs> the other nice feature about the Jet, the Jet 1 at least, um, you can unscrew the air cylinder and uh, replace it with a charged air cylinder. So you can carry extra air cylinders on the Jet 1. You have a Foster fill on the bottom. So it actually has a Foster connector, not a fill probe. You're welcome. And the reason why I keep saying Jet 1 is because we have the Jet 2. Um, if you haven't figured it out yet, there's two cylinders. Two? Yeah. All right. Or the math. Jet Dose. Math if you again. Yes, <laughs> math. So um, same thing, exact same gun, except you have two air cylinders. Um, so you're going to get twice the shot count. It adds less than a pound to the gun. So um, if you're going to be primarily shooting it as a pistol, I would go with the Jet 1 personally. But um, with the Jet 2, you can also use it as a pistol. It's just a little bit heavier on the front. Um, last thing is it does have threads in the end of the, the barrel shroud here. So they're half 20. You can get an adapter, like a, a TX200 adapter will work. Um, screw it in there, and you can put your moderator on there, and you'll be good to go. Um, these are, without the moderator, they are a little loud. I mean, I wouldn't call it backyard friendly. Um, but it's not super loud either. It's not as loud as a 22 long rifle. So, um, but you throw a moderator on there, makes a little great little squirrel gun, plinking gun. Um, I intend on using this for 10 meter silhouette. I can use it as a carbine and as a pistol and shoot both rifle and pistol in the 10 meter silhouette competition. So we'll give it a try and see how it does, but we've had really good experiences with this so far. One more thing colored tubes for the pistol. So you can customize it, give it a little bit of bling, however you want to say it. So there's a blue, a red, and a green. Ah, you're gonna hand me the blue one. Thank it's you so one. much. <laughs> All right, so we got the blue one right here. So you got three color choices, four if you, well, I guess black is a hue, not a color, but you got four colors, we'll call it colors. So you give, uh, give you options. So a lot of our guns this year, you can adjust them to your shooting style, adjust them to how you shoot and what you're gonna be shooting. So that's kind of the theme, I guess you could say this year, is being able to adjust the gun to you, not having to adjust your shooting style to the gun. That pretty much covers the, the new guns. The only other thing that we were adding this year is the high capacity Blitz magazine. And this will work with your Factor, Factor Bullpup, also in the same caliber. But this is a 30 caliber magazine that holds 33 rounds. So um, your typical swing load magazine that comes with the Blitz, it'll empty it in about half a second. It takes about a second to empty this one. So um, you empty a 10 of pellets in about three magazines. So um, it's fun though. That pretty much covers the new stuff for us this year. Um, we may have some other little things that are coming out later in the year. Keep an eye on the um, EWA to see what we they have out there. but. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Hot Sun USA for this year. Cecil did a fantastic job there, saving my very, very jet lag brain from telling you all the numbers and the shot counts and all the stats on all the new stuff from Hat Sun. But 
I do like the look of this Jet 1 and Jet 2 pistol and it's going to be coming into the UK through Sportsman Gun Centre. So, I just wanted to say to you, I like the look of it, I like the feel of it, it looks very well made and I think they're going to be very popular and if I like the look of it, I like to tell you I like the look of it. So there you go, that's the Jet 1 and the Jet 2 pistol, they're going to be in the UK, it's a good thing, it's not all American, UK stuff. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> I got, I got to know if it's working. <laughs> it's, we it's got to work know. It's working great, sir. <laughs> when you are quite ready, gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, Governor. What we got here today? <laughs> Evening, Squire. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Poppet. <laughs> we have PCP. Giles has given us a look. We gotta get serious. So, so you're gonna be Travis. He says he's got a lot of memory card there. Oh, well, well, I think it's so working. <laughs> you're absolutely fine. I'm gonna stand in front of the camera and say, I actually don't know whether they are actually trying to insult me <laughs> or take the PP. I have it's no all, idea. It's all. Do you understand what he's saying? I do. Okay. I do. I do. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it in US. Okay. We're gonna do it in US. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Travis, man. What's up, BJ? How, you doing, How are bro? you? Good bro. to see you, man. Yeah. What absolutely. do we got going on here? We are. We, this is Nixon Defense. Donnie FL and PCP Kong have decided to partner with the Nixon Defense and to bring a P, affordable PCP rifle to the market. I heard something like that was going on. Um, I was wondering who they were going to connect with Correct. on that. Why Nixon? They wanted. To, they were eager to learn about PCP as much as we were eager to learn about PCP. Because so, they've been making guns like... 20 years. Yeah, right? like yeah, a long time, yep. right. I've heard of them before, and the shotguns and stuff like shotgun, that. Shotgun, yep. So, but now they're doing they're PCPs. they're plastic molding company as well. Oh, I yeah. see some of that. So they're making all their own stocks, they're making all their own barrels, they're making all their own actions. Okay. So... Very cool. Yep. We're bringing them into the U.S.? We're or? the U.S. distributor for Nixon Defense. So if one of these comes to the U.S., it's coming through PCP Kong? And on EFL, yep. That's pretty sweet. There's a lot going on here, man. Correct. We have an Ozark line which is this model here. I like is, this stock. Yeah, it's a Turkish walnut stock. It comes at 22 and 25. Our models come with a uh, 500cc bottle and a, a adjustable or a heavier hammer spring. For the US market, oh. we wanted to make sure it was up, up, to, power. up to power. Okay. Right, yeah. What caliber is this going to be available in? 22 and 25. What, uh, in 22, I know you love 22. That's I love 22, yeah, 22 too. So favorite, yeah. What power are we seeing in that? Um, at speeds? Or yeah, speeds. Speeds, uh, closer to nine, 900, 905. So that's with an 18 or a 15? That's 18 grain JSP. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Barrels are made in-house by Defense, Nixon okay. Defense. So everything for budget-friendly, entry-level PCP. And that looks maybe threaded? Yes, sir. Ready for moderator. Okay. Moderator ready. Have you enough? Have you enough? Awesome. Yes, sir. So the... You said the barrels made by Nixon. By Nixon, yes. Okay, so yeah. th do they have like their own in-house? They have their own in-house barrel oh, okay. making machine, mill, whatever. You, I believe that's what it's called. And if uh, you said it's shooting around 900 with the spring we put in it, with yes, with the with the heavier hammer spring that we brought. Okay, it's not regulated, if I remember. Unregulated. Okay. It does. Have can a, you it tone it? A, it can you tone it down a little yeah, bit? It, just, it does have a little power adjuster on the side. Okay which is easy, it's user friendly at home. You don't have to go to a Looks like a shop. transfer port adjuster? Transfer, yep. Okay, um, what about magazines? You get four magazines. Four in magazines? The, in, in the 22, they're 12 shot, mm -hmm. and then in the 25, they're 10 shot. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Four magazines, but no, four mag nobody gives you four magazines. Oh, and we give you an O-ring kit. Okay. And some of, the, some of the guns come with a phosphor fitting, and okay. some of them come with a fill probe. Okay. So it comes with fill probe, But this one's phosphor. This one's phosphor. Gotta like that. Yeah, this would, this one's more for the hunting market style. Okay. Yeah, that stock looks really yeah. Kind of tied to the wall here, but you know, that shoulder is really nice. It. This is the same model. Sorry about that. Yeah. This is the same model, just with. Oh. Uh, so does, it's user. Does it it's fold? More, it does not. This one does not fold. So it collapses. We have a model that does fold. Okay. So basically. Same thing, but instead of full wood, you get half wood. Correct. This is a TW. And you can extend. And extend. With half wood. Half wood. All right. That's yep. pretty sweet. We also have a tactical synthetic, so it's all synthetic. We do not, oh. we're, we're not bringing in the camo model. Okay. We're only bringing in the black synthetic. Okay. It's the same gun, 
Same, all the same great features that Nixon offers and Donnie and Phil, just without the camera. And so Donnie FL has specced some of the stuff? Correct. With the factory, so we're getting in kind of like our version of it. Yes. Which would be a little bit different than the worldwide. But worldwide yes, correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Were they pretty easy to work with on that? They were eager to work with us on that. They were excited. They wanted the information. They wanted to be able to work together to come up with the best. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So what's this bad boy up here? This is an Escalade. So Looks like an Escalade. Yeah. Holy cow. Just a just double bottle. Okay. It's got a little bit of mag storage in the butt stock. Overall, everything's the same. And this is the synthetic, synthetic so solid yep. synthetic, yep. nice, nice high grade, and uh, made in house. This is what is the 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 one that you showed me in camouflage is going to look like this. Correct, without the rear bottle. Okay. Yep. Nice. And you said unregulated. Unregulated. Okay. That probably translates to a little more affordable. Yes. Yeah, very affordable. Okay. We start at six hundred and go to eight hundred. This model is eight hundred dollars. Okay. Well, you got two bottles, so I, I can see yeah. where that would come in. But before we go, I'd like to show you this one. This is the um, this is the Archero. Okay. And the Archero is yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's got kind of a like traditional rifle, rifle shotgun tube. And so you you fill the tube, so you would have to use a pill probe on this one. Okay. Yeah. I but see as that you up, see it, it comes in there. black. Yep. Oh, and that rotates, rotates so you're, yeah. you're not getting dirt, grime, ig iguana guts, yeah. stuff like that in there. This has got a nice heft to it. Like, this yeah. is a really nice stock. It does stock. have an adjustable cheek well, so you can okay. get a higher cheek rail. You just push the button, and it goes in and out. Maybe they here, can see that. Here, let's put this up right here. That's a pretty good level of yeah. adjustment. It's a nice, they do it's a good nice job with the, yeah. the with the molding. I've seen they in the do. booth some of their Very other well. stuff, and it's it's good stuff. And the the block is all metal. All aluminum, it's, yep. Yeah, one piece. Safety in Same all the right power places. Adjust, power adjuster on the side. Yeah, that's nice. Yes, that's sir. nice. And also threaded. All of them look all like them, they're all threaded. Of them, all of them are threaded. Okay. Well, it makes sense. Silence is a priority. Absolutely. Snatched. Yeah, that's the Brad Pitt. Brad and Pitt. Jason Statham. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mean proper. <laughs> oh, oh, we're rolling. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, welcome man. Back. Hey, yeah. Appreciate right. it. This one, I like, I like the looks of this one. Yeah, this. This is our. This is my favorite. Yeah. This is my favorite. Like pick of the litter favorite. Pick, this is, yeah. This is this, the, this is the yeah. one you go. Oh, that's the one I'm gonna use. Because I see this. Now I, I drive. I drive a Subaru, not a truck. Right. So I'll call it a truck gun, but I mean Subaru gun. Okay. Like this is the. This yeah. is our. This is our. Basically truck gun. Okay. Cool. So what's cool about this one? Everything else is the same in the ergonomics and how it works. Just a shorter barrel. But what's cool is this shrouded barrel with a little type of tensioning system with it. Okay. So on our model, this one doesn't have the US model mm -hmm. adapter, but on the US model adapter, which is actually like this one. This green one? I can yeah. grab the green one. All right. See how this works? So as you tighten oh, this, this yeah. t t tensions the barrel. Yeah. So they're a little bit more accurate. These That's are shooting about sweet. 860. Okay. So they're That's a great in velocity. Yeah, That's 20, a great velocity. This only comes in 22. Okay. So, but, it has a folding stock. Now look how little that is. Great for pesting, great for car, great for hiking. Now this is unregulated. Unregulated. And my guess is there's no valve in here. No valve. Does that mean I could swap this out for a carbon fiber bottle if Absolutely. I wanted some more shots? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I don't like this grip, it can, can I swap that out? Absolutely, it accepts the AR model grip. Okay, so, and that's different from the other ones? Correct. Right? It, Correct. Well, wood, obviously, you're not going to do anything. You can't change the wood. But there's that synthetic one, that's molded in. That's molded in. But this I can change for an AR compatible Correct. grip. That's nice. So you can um, put your favorite grip and buttstock as well. You can take the buttstock off. Oh, so you, you slide that off the buffer yep, tube, put your different one on. Yep. Price on these in the US? These are close to 700. Okay. For, yeah, so, in the, so you get the same thing, you get four mags. You get a lens cloth, O-ring kit, fill okay. probe. This doesn't need fill probe, it's got a faucet fitting. Faucet fitting. So, if I wanted to get one shipped to me, how would I, like when? Like For how consumer, long do I have to wait? They're ready to go right now. Ready today? In-house, yes. I could order you one go today. go right to Donnie FL or the pellet shop. Okay, and will they, 
Will they go to other dealers at some point? Anytime and any any new dealer wants to, just contact us at sales at pcpcalling.com. We'll okay. take care of you. Sweet. But they are ready to ship in-house. Okay. Well, it took about an hour, <laughs> let's be honest. Because most of the time everyone's just been laughing, haven't they? What's, explain to me, PJ, what's, what's the English thing? Well, I watched a lot of Danger Mouse when I was a child, and I did, not I? A little bit of Monty Python? <laughs> Some Shaun of the Dead? Hey, really? No. no. Just having some fun. That's Just fine. having some fun. Yeah. Well, you've had everyone in giggles. <laughs> That's fine. That's right. There we are. Well, uh, Nick and Defence, come and have a look. We've had a good look around here this morning. It does look really, really, really interesting. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be very good. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. I think, I think, they'll, I think yeah. they're going to do well on the market for entry level. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now going to remove his mic because I, I'm actually finding it a little bit offensive. <laughs> we love you, Giles. All right, Thank sweet you. cheeks. Come on then. Let's put Hello. Up. You cheeky monkey. Sweet, you're a cheeky sausage. You're a cheeky sausage. <laughs> John. Hey, Jess. How are you? Good I to see good, you. Actually, glad we're doing this today, not yesterday. Really? I was beat. Yeah, I, I, it's a shot show. First day, it was very, very busy here yesterday. Yes. <laughs> yes. I struggled yesterday when I've got a bad hip, that's a different story. But anyway, we're here. Yeah. We're here. You've been pushing the envelope Always. over the last couple of months. <laughs> should, we, should we say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. There's been some good things. Though. Yeah. Moving things forward. And you're holding on to one of them right now. Yeah, we have it. So, yep, the FX Pantera. It, it's a longer gun. It's so a long gun. the drive-by. There we go. Pantera, yes. It's here we they're they're shipping, they're um yep. time people are seeing this, they're at dealers, a lot of them out there. Absolutely. Even in the UK. <laughs> We're not behind everyone else. We have as limited a stock as everyone else, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. But they are actually, I do know from talking to the distributor, some shops have had them, pre-orders may already have sold yeah. out. So if you scream at yeah. FX in the next few weeks and say, well, I pre-ordered, but there's more coming. They're coming, yeah. But the first batch no, the is probably gone. The doing really, really well. Yeah. Look, this is the first, this is the first true rifle since the Crown, if yes. you think about it. The last okay. few years, a lot of updates to the impact of other rifles, but this is a, you know, a new breech block and a lot of innovation that is exciting for air gunners. Because mm -hmm. obviously, whenever you see something new, I'm sure it'll it'll keep infiltrating the line, and what what's more to come? Everybody knows that. But the first one is that you know, I think people have known by now, competition focused rifle. Yep. Um, but you know, the, the thing that's I feel like is the most interesting is the plenum technology. That's the big leap forward, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, the problem is, uh, like, take the Crown for instance. I love the Crown. Absolutely. And so do a lot of people, but they wanted the performance of the impact, especially with slugs and speed. And, and in, in, in the past, a breach, you know, the, the planet would have to be inside here, so you have limited space. Yep. Whereas the bullpup, like, a, like the impacts, we, we can put it in the back here, right? Plenty yep. Space. Um, the engineering around that is, this is the plenum mm -hmm. over the barrel, which yeah. is the, the fact that you have pressurized air with the barrel going through the middle of it, uh, and, and that it works brilliantly. That's, that's that big innovation leap. So it, it makes that barrel Rigid, solid. Um, that was almost like the happy accent, you know, A, we had to get the plenum outside of the breach so we could do yeah. a bigger plenum. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, this is like rock solid where it, <laughs> you have so, all that air pressuring. Sometimes when accidents happen, it's actually a really good thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can knock the crap out of this, no, no problem. And yeah, it, it was a very happy accent. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people come up because we saw, I think you and I saw IWA, a rifle that was doing, you know, uh, I, I, like a... The, the, the barrel going through the air cylinder thing, I, I saw... It's been attempted. Yeah, five or six years ago, right. I, I saw something. In fact, I did a video on the channel where I disassembled right. one of them. And it's something that in industry circles has been talked about for a long time. It's yeah. not, it's, it, it, it's... It's interesting because Frederick had that thought, you know, like most of the time, Frederick's like, oh, I thought of that 15 years ago. And, and the yeah. reason that they never did it was the problem is, if it's a, a reservoir of air, then that pressure changes and yes. then you have point of impact shift. So you yeah. gotta ruin your uh, accuracy. But because it's a plenum and it's the it, same pressure. It's consistent. It's the consistency yeah. and that's why it works. And then getting it all working, especially the plenum, you're dumping air in and- Absolutely. Yeah. And the thing cool. is as well is that in here, from my understanding and from watching many, many episodes of Mythbusters, which is a very good television <laughs> awesome program, show. The air pressure required in here to make that stable is very, very small. Correct. So even though you're 
putting through 150, 160 bar or right. whatever you convert yep. to PSI, actually, even if that was only five or 10 bar, you're still never going to be able to move that barrel right. because that pressure Completely is so immense. Rigid. I think on the Mythbusters program, they proved that five bar was enough to blow open a prison cell door. It was, it was that much pressure. So, Link in the description. There we go, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I won't get nothing for it. Adam and Jamie are never gonna talk to me. But anyway, so that's the science behind that. Yeah. But it is just so innovative to make it at the front. Yeah. Which means, I guess, when you pull the trigger, you get less going back, particularly yeah, in the a higher calibers. Yeah, it's efficient because that air is dumping, uh, and they, they they have a new valve. It's a high energy, quick valve, so it's, yeah. it opens quickly. It's balanced. It gets that air in there efficiently moving. It, you know, with with uh, where things have gone these last few years, a lot of it's about it's that combination of plenum size, valving, yeah. regulator pressure, all those things work in harmony. And they've really, FX has really dialed that down. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually, depending on the model, the plenum size will change too. So like the more 500, the yes. more of a lighter weight slugs, that's not a big plenum, that's a smaller plenum. And those, yeah, I'm sure in the future, we're gonna see different sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a 35 cal, something like this, that would have a different, so you, you can match the plenum size to the valving. Um, and in that sense, this is very purpose built. Right. More so than like the impact and things like that, where you're switching line, you know, calibers and links. This yeah. is built around uh, like whatever the caliber is and length. Yes. Right. You're not necessarily swapping things out, especially because you have a pressurized plenum around that barrel. Yeah. So it, it is basically it's a it's a one one purpose gun. Right. You're you know if, if you want a compact shooter, you go for the 500. Yep. If you want something longer, you go for the 700. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then you got the 600 in the middle. For 600 the in the middle, <laughs> yeah. but which which is there? It's very good. 600 in the middle. Actually, I think the 600. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what yeah. the market wants. I think obviously if you're a pure competition shooter, because again this is this is for that NRL precision. Absolutely. Uh, you know, shooting off barricades, and, and and it's funny when we release it, people are like that's going to be a low shot count. Yeah, we know. The, the, <laughs> we're not surprised. Thanks for telling us. Um, we understand that this is like 14, 15 shots per fill. Because a stage on a precision stage is 10, maybe 12 shots. Yeah. And and the, the whole idea is by having the air cylinder at the back there, um, but still having, you know, we're not using the cylinder as a, like some, some rivals. You can have a very narrow front. You got the, uh, the M block, you can put your weights, balance points, mm -hmm. barricade block, all the things that precision rifles shooters need to compete. The thing with it is as well is that, I mean, the PRS, PRS market is obviously huge. Right. But even with a smaller shot count from that small bottle at the back. Particularly in the UK, which is obviously where I come from, two two rim fire shooters, it's absolutely fine. You know, if you're gonna go out and do some pest control with a, yeah, a firearm like rifle, squirrels, rabbits. <laughs> you're not gonna shoot a huge amount anyway. Don't so get me wrong, this is it, people use it for hunting, but we're we're being very clear. We build this for competition and yes. it's no surprise yep. people have been wondering but with this new action, is there other versions of this rifle to come? Of course there are. <laughs> it's new technology, but I, this, this is what yeah, we Yeah, really I, I don't think we ever go and say that you've finished with that, oh, yeah, have we're you? Good. No, yeah, there's, there's more to uh, come. There's more to come. Yeah. And it certainly does look incredibly sleek and solid. It's, it's yeah, um, a lot of thought. Uh, truly, the other thing with FX, people always get upset that um, the ambidextrous, those freaky lefties, and I'm married to one, so I understand. <laughs> but uh, it's truly like this can switch around, the cocking level can switch around. Yep. It, it, we're being lefty friendly, so again. So the only the only thing that's it. fixed on the side really is that is the magazine loading and uh, yeah. the charge port. It's easy. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Um, but yeah. It's, it's uh, other things that are being done with it. It's that that's a bigger uh, two millimeters bigger than our previous. Absolutely. Magazines. So you can you can work with magazines are crown style magazines yep. or the side shot or, standard or side shot. What we call it. Standard side shots up slightly deeper so the cover is yeah. slightly thicker on the top so what it? it is is now for uh by the time people see this the magazines come with both lids if you're buying an extra magazine well if you buy it from the shop they might have some old stock but in the okay. future you'll be having both on there and they sell them separately but it's just a bigger lid right to accommodate that bigger projectile which is exciting because that allows you know most projectiles the market's kind of built around what FX is doing because yeah. FX is kind of at the forefront of you know, small bore slugs. Yeah. And now they'll be able to expand the size by two millimeters, which mm -hmm. particularly in like 30 caliber, 35 caliber, I think that's going to be very interesting yes. to get the, the BCs that I think is what's needed for those calibers. So there's a lot of exciting stuff coming. This it, it is, it is, I mean, 
yeah, I've been, I've been walking around and I've been being shown things and I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I think it could be a good year. It could it's be a good year. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, FX yeah. is always trying to figure things out. Um, and you know, it, that's you see in our past releases. You know, when we came out with yep. the 800 millimeter tension or the power plant, it's always about what can we do to enhance performance. And, yeah. and a lot of that has been every, everything that has been great before has been brought into this rifle. You know, even from the backside, if you shoot an FX, you'll recognize uh, you know the quick tune system, the the cocking lever is the same. It's, yep. It's all the things that are great about FX, just with some new features. But it's even things, you've obviously had some shooters go through it, because even down to the Picatinny rail on the side, right. it's now numbered on the side, so you, to allow quick change of scopes and things like that, yep. it, it's been well thought out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we put a yeah. lot of thought into this. I think uh, Sweden has really gotten that feedback from you know the shooters, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people like yourself. We're always listening to the people using it and saying, hey, what about this, what about this? Uh, Yep. Good idea is a good idea. Well, I have to tell you that, that mine has arrived at home. Oh, you, you got yours. <laughs> I have one. Awesome. I have one. I, actually, I might have two. <laughs> don't, because... don't tell people that. <laughs> They'll be very upset. <laughs> well, Charles they will. Two. I have two. I can't even go. Yeah. However, let me point out that one of them is, because you'll oh, be waiting for it, is the sub-12. You have one gun. A sub-12 foot gun is in the gun. Uh, no, it is, John. No, it's not. It, the sub-12 would teach you Americans how to shoot accurately. It's a training a training gun. Don't say that, John. You'll never be welcome through passport control now. I know that everybody so. in England says, give me my uh, FAC license. I want to shoot like a man. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm anyway. I'm excited to read these comments. No, I, there'll be a, an edit button. Anyway, I have two. It's coming. Uh, you're going to see, look, yep. they're already out in the UK anyway. So you're going to see, look, I already know there's other YouTubers putting videos out and they're already incredibly impressed. Right. Um, I, I have seen uh, uh, one chap, Neil, is putting a video out. He hasn't even cleaned the barrel and he's getting little groups at 100 yards and he's super happy. So I'll tell you the thing that impresses yeah. me the most, and I think this is why people are shooting yeah, these instead of 22 LRs over here, mm. is that they're able to, uh, the other day we were out shooting and seven shots in a row, we actually thought maybe the chronograph was broken because it kept saying yeah, duplicate, 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 duplicate. Yeah. Or like unplugged it, plugged it in. We did seven shots in a row at the exact same speed. Mm. And a lot of that's, like I said, the plenum, the, the valving, the regulator, all those working together, you can get standard deviations down to, you know, between 1.0 and 2.0. I mean, that's the difference maker because you're controlling all the aspects yes. for accuracy. Yep. So, so again, yeah. I'll cover that all in the video, but um, it's very, very nice. Can I show you something anyway, really quick? You can do, absolutely. This is yeah. Just, um, this isn't, yeah, make sure that doesn't fall off. So uh, this, we're there at the go. Bullet Central booth. Because uh, we just have an element GRS booth, so... Yeah, no, we just... <laughs> John, we, we just walk around shot show and you just pick guns up, don't you? Yes. <laughs> they know who he is, it's like, so it's John. So Central, they made a left-handed impact magazine. Okay. I mean, I've always thought... It's there, a was, there was nearly magazine. a rude word that came out okay. then, oh, because, okay. like, there will be a lot of people out there going, at last! I've always felt like, if, I mean, it doesn't really get in the way, but that's really cool. So I, I think they're releasing that in about a month, but it's a, a precision made mag with a little, it clicks in from the left side. So basically what you've got is the plate underneath. Show it up to the camera, John, a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, gun's not loaded, we're at a show, so we can wave it around. Um, so basically they've made a, a new, they've modernized the plate underneath. Yeah, by the looks of it, reverse things on and the reverse magazine, it around. so it goes from the left side. That's really kind of cool. Okay. I love that. I was very excited. Right. I mean, this is just Bullet Central being innovative and saying, here's something that some people will like and making it. There you go. I know this. it's going to be anodized and stuff. They, they just... Uh, this is a, a, a demo model. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's cool. I love that. Okay. Excellent. So, yeah. guys, Bullet Central, let's see if we can get them in the UK. Let's wait and see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, I always like it when... I mean, that's yeah. the cool thing about the rifles. We always... You know, at FX, we love it that people are doing stuff like that. Always mm -hmm. trying to innovate. I know there's couple of people coming up that are building chassis for guns, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I love it. I, I, that's just tip of the iceberg, isn't it? Yeah. And before the end of the year, it's, it's not going to look like that anymore. It's going to be completely different. Not from you, by the way. No. Not from you. Not no. from, uh, extras. Extras. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's, not, let's not cause any trouble. I love uh, <laughs> clever people doing stuff and making things. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a fun way to make it so it's uniquely yours. Absolutely. Which I love about the FX rifles, too. Anything else in the year coming up? You've got... Oh, there's tons of stuff. But, Northeast, uh, Armac. Yeah, Northeast. That's yep. We're very excited about more competitions going, you know, with the 
Pro Air launching this year so that mm -hmm. people are able to get their scores registered and get rankings and, yep. and be able to uh, attend events, especially, you know, something like, I, I know, speed event at RMAC, maybe 300 people want to be there, they can only be 100 yeah, people, absolutely. you want to make sure by having uh, your Pro Air qualifying on a monthly basis, you can, I think what it is is they take the your best uh, two or three scores of the year and that's how you get your ranking and that's how you can kind of have your calling card to say, give me a spot. Okay. So I, I love that innovation for our, yep. uh, our sport. So I think competition is a wonderful thing. Being excited about the Northeast Classic, I just got word that... Yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. So John, you, John, you just but... broke, you've just broken the news of, a, of, a, of, a, of someone else. Is... No, yeah, it's, fair it's enough. very excited. Okay, so decision later. <laughs> I'll decide whether or not we edit that out, shall we? Let's ah, see. Leave, no, it leave it in. Leave it in. Okay. Our Mac, Mac uh, the Northeast, and yeah. I, I think there's other people working on some competition. Okay. And, and what I'm excited about here in the states, I think there's a lot of people getting ready to do little monthly matches, and it's not necessarily bench rest all the time. I know Precision. Much like the, uh, you know, like the NRL PRS market over here. Yep. My understanding is they're really folding things in. So if you shoot at one of your, those events, you get your scores counted for um, for Pro Air. So it's it's okay. all a lot of people working together in the industry to help things grow. And then obviously from the FX standpoint, there's there's going to be more with that breach block to come. It's no secret. But <laughs> I would say don't worry, the FX is safe for the moment. The, yeah, the impact, <laughs> there isn't. So uh, let's ask the question that will be screamed at, yeah. Impact M4. I mean, d d at some point, of course, it's going to be happening, but uh, uh, there is nothing in the pipeline cool. for M4 right now. Right. So it's kind of like if you are, what's nice, this is a purpose-built gun, the Pantera, but it's no impact. The impact no. is a, such a special gun. And Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's not there to replace the impact. It's, it's got it's a completely different purpose. It's a different yeah. 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 So you don't have to worry yet. No M4. I know okay. people get a little trigger happy on should I or shouldn't I. Um, I can you honestly should. say Absolutely you should. there's no yeah. M4 in the pipeline right now. Yeah. There's other things that are being worked on. Okay. Yeah. Are we allowed to say anything else? Say the names? Are we allowed to say anything else? Oh. No? That's all I can say. Okay. Just something fun. Fair yeah. enough. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's all complimentary. So it's... Uh, yeah. There we are. Right. I said too much. <laughs> Actually, I All think right. you, I think he probably has. Yeah. So, All right. Okay. Give me fifty bucks. I'll edit that bit out. Okay. Right. Lovely, John. Good to All see right. you again. Yeah. There uh, you go. Uh, there's, Thank I've you. actually got yep. the money already. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Lovely. Welcome, to Shasho 2023, Ervin Cherry Booth. My name's Corey. We have with us the Avengex. So this is our take on what we think is possibly the ultimate air gun. Let's start with the action. The action itself is milled out of a single piece of aluminum. You can change the side lever if you want to go left-handed with it. Transfer port adjustment for high and low power. Still got the externally adjustable regulator. Hammer adjustment in the back. Tube fills to 300 bar in this one. All that seems relatively standard. But this is still the Avenge X. This is the same gun. What we have here is the wood stock version with a bottle. All these parts are interchangeable between the guns. So you can unscrew the bottle, slide it right off. A few screws, take the stock off, interchange it. With this capability, we go to a bullpup, semi bullpup configuration, tactical configuration. When I say that it's modular, we can go as far as unscrewing the shroud. Once the shroud's off, two screws in the top, take the barrel off, take your, uh, take your hex key right in there, take out the pellet probe, put in whatever pellet probe you want for 177, 22, or 25 caliber, interchange the caliber on the gun, tune it right in, again, with that externally adjustable hammer spring, externally adjustable regulator, tune it right in for whatever caliber you're looking at. Now, with that being said, 25 caliber, you got up to 60 foot-pounds of energy in this gun with all of the extra, with all the extra adjustments we got in it. Also, with the bottle, 25 caliber, say you want to tune it to get some shots, you're going to get over 110 shots. You're going to get at least 110 shots with this gun. So you have the best of all worlds. Still going to be getting about 50 shots if you stick with just the standard cylinder gun. So there is all kinds of versatility. I mean, this is 
it is going to be great. The really, really impressive part, we'll go back to this one, $4.99, $4.99. We're doing all that at that price point. Can't wait to get one into everybody's hands. Now, Corey did a good job there, but I am just going to step in because obviously I get to look at this stuff as well. Um, the build quality on this is, is really, really nice. And there are some other things on there as well, depending on which version you go for. You can get like adjustable butt pads and you get things like Picatinny rails on, on some versions. But the interesting thing is, is that price, $4.99. Now, that's, obviously that's dollars. Um, yes, we would love to have something like this in the UK. Please, someone in the UK, pay attention. Uh, you know, in the US, they're selling this stuff you know, at $499 and it's modular. So you can take the bits off and take the bits off. And we, we don't have anything like that in the UK. So someone out there, please pay attention. But this looks really, really nice. No rough edges, no rough finish. It is actually a really smart bit of kit. And I didn't get to ask also the prices for changing bits over. Um, I'm guessing because the rifle is $499, that that's not going to be an extortionate cost every time you want to change things over, but that is just my guess. And I'm also hearing that there is going to be plenty of availability of the bits as well. So it's not like you're going to get one and then there's no more bits ever seen again. Um, this is going to, uh, you know, be available. The bits are going to be available. And I love the idea at 4.99, and I keep saying that price because it is so good that you can buy one gun and a few weeks later you can change it into something else. Yeah, I know it's been done before, but not at that price point. And that really is something that's very interesting. So there we go, that's the Avenge X. Now, Lord of Utah, Mr. Justin Jacobson, along with Cameron and Mark from Akitak, took me for a spin, not just any old spin. This was in the Akitak truck. And this is the size of seven and a half ton UK lorry. Everyone gets out of your way. And the spin, well, that's cruising the strip Utah style. Oh, until we got lost. Anyone driving a vehicle with Mr. Jacobson, I suggest turning the sat nav on. Only when we see LA as a possible next stop do you think, well, where the hell are we? And when the Venetian door team wants you to park outside the hotel lobby, you know you're in your own private hangover movie. I'm here on the Akitak stand. There's something attached to this rifle at the front just there. And I've got to say, I think it's revolutionary. Um, I haven't seen anything like it before. If you're a fan of your bipods, long range shooting, target shooting, anything like that, you are going to love this because I simply want them to take my money already. How are you doing guys? Uh, thanks for coming by and stopping by and checking out our new bipod. This is so new, it doesn't even have a name. So if you guys have a good name, let us know and, uh, and we'll, we'll see if we can name it, you know, what you named it or what you called it. So really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and checking this out. We're super excited to see this. We've been working with uh, Paul Phillips, King of Two Mile, to come up with this beautiful beast here. So it's basically the same as, as the HD50. So for uh, 50 cal, high caliber rounds. Um, so this is for made for the ELR shooters, guys that are like pushing the envelope, going for one mile, two mile plus. And it, you'll see, this is pretty exciting. So the features here, if you needed to go down lower to get more stability, you can. So same as the HD50 legs. These things can retract. If you needed to fold this away, you can fold it away on your rifle. It comes with skis. So these are beautiful skis that come with the skis. So if you needed to, you know, move your rifle to your desired, so, but here's a cool feature of this thing. This is a hydraulic bipod. So as you turn this valve here, it's filled with hydraulic fluid. So you just kind of turn a valve, 
what it's going to do is pr push hydraulic fluid up into here, moving this shaft here up or down to your desired uh, location. So basically, if you're imagine you're you're shooting at a mile, you know you're slightly off. You don't want to mess with your monopod or your bags because once you do that, you could potentially be way off than you know than initially started. So what this does. This is a hydraulic system that allows you to make micro adjustments. So you just kind of go up or down. You're not going to see this go up significantly, like you know, centimeters. You're just going to see it go up and down micro adjustments. You know, and the price, we don't have a price yet for it, but it's going to be somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars. So I think it's priced well, well, well. So this will be available late March, early April. Yeah, that's what. Are we both looking that way? Well, that's the camera, Joe. There's me and there's the audience. There we go, give it away. We'll leave that bit in. Okay, of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, everyone, this is Joe. Joe, shake hands and say hello. So, you should watch the camera. What? No. There's some talent that you just can't work with, isn't there? Yeah. The term talent is talent. very loosely it's used. Very loosely used. Seriously, we haven't caught you in the. The loo? The loo. Yeah. Or whatever, like we see you at our back. He's good fun, he does sketches. We do a little joke, running yeah. joke. Running joke, I'll cut that in. So we're in Vegas, how is it? It's great. Uh, in fact, I just did a video and the first place I had to visit was the Element booth because I'm pretty excited about their new Theos. Yeah. Not that I'm going to plug that right now, but yeah, it's a pretty cool... They're Check not, out the videos you, on the theaters. Not going to give you discount, Joe. No, I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's the theos that looks very good, and then there's yeah. the new digital scope as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Did you get a chance yeah. to really check it out? When you can get near it, yeah, it's packed. Yeah. You can't, I can't get near it, so yeah. it's going to go really well. Put it that yeah, way. I think it's so too. Go yeah. really well. So, how's things with you? Where can people find you? What I mean, what do you do? Okay, all right. Yeah. So, uh, my channel on YouTube is called Air Gun Scientist. Yep. Um, I was on a on a TV show, and Rossi was introducing me, and he knew I was used to be a physicist in aerospace, and he goes, and this is Joe Broncato. He's like the Air Gun Scientist, and I went. YouTube <laughs> that day. <laughs> Immediately, I'll tie that down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because you did the American Air Gunner channel. Yeah, yeah, I did that for a while. Yeah. She's on, been on American television. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, don't do it when you're just about ready to have bypass or you look really winded. Look okay. <laughs> I want to know, but you went on American television, so yeah, I yeah. assume you've got a little walk of fame now in Hollywood. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I have a it, most have a star. Yeah. Mine's just a circle. It's just yeah. It's no points on it at no. all. Yeah. Okay. So they can find you on YouTube. Where yeah. else can they find you? Uh, Topgun-airguns.com. Okay. If you want to put that in there, if that's okay. Um, Money and, later, Joe. Yeah. Money later. <laughs> I just just check out the YouTube channel. I have. Okay. I, I do these little informative YouTubes of like, hey, what's the difference between uh, first focal plane, second focal plane, or yeah. MRAD versus MOA? Kind of informative videos, or okay. I'll show you a gun. So yeah, they're they're not geared for monetary. They're just geared for information. Yep. And we got pretty decent following. So. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate you giving me a little plug there. Give him a plug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He is a very nice, entertaining guy, everyone, so do, do go and check him out. It's fun. <laughs> That's at least another $20. Yes, yes, yes. He's never bought me anything. What is that in pounds today, man? 3P. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for having anyway, me on, Josh. Go I check him out. Airgun Scientist. Everyone, this is Lily. Optizan. Hi everyone. Okay, Lily knows all the numbers and everything that I don't. So she's going to do this bit, all right? Have you got this? Yeah. I Good. Got right, we're going to go with it. Here we go. Okay. So, um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm educating her. Educating her. I'm causing trouble. Okay, Professor so, Giles. The what? Professor Giles. Something like that. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Lily was looking at the camera, so it didn't work. You, you. <laughs> Here we go. It's tired. Anyway, right, so Optizan are doing lots of new things. Let me see if I can remember all of them and get them right. And I'm going to look at Lily over there from time to time to make sure I'm getting it right. So, the compact scopes, the CP compact scopes, they are now going to come in a first focal plane model as well. There's still the second focal plane, but the first focal plane is coming out. 
but that is only in 4 to 16, okay? But really exciting that you're going to be able to get a little compact scope like that in first focal plane. That's going to be really exciting when those come out. And, you know, you've got that small little parallax shift on the side because you've got the smaller turret. So, you know, you've, your hunter field target shooters love these. And also if you've got a rifle that doesn't want one of these dirty great giant scopes put on top of it, you know, these are going to be ideal. So compact first focal plane scope, that's going to be a winner. And uh, they look very nice as well. So we've got that one. Okay, so we have the EVX Gen 2. Now, what's the difference between that and the Gen 1? Basically, what Optizan have done is they've upgraded the internals. They've changed the internals and they've made them stainless steel inside. So, stainless steel internals on an EVX Gen 2. And when you lift those locking turret caps and give it a turn, you can feel it. It really is a nice, crisp feel when you're dialing. And the good thing is, those locking turret caps on the top, they give you one included in the box. So if you're changing calibre, so you're going to have two different settings or two different tape markings, you can pop one off and pop another one on. And that's really nice because some of the manufacturers charge you for those and Optizan include it in the box. You've also got this throw lever on there as well now, so that when you want to move your magnification ring, it's a really nice, smooth action. And now the turrets are 10 mil per turn, which is 20 MOA. Um, and apparently that's what a lot of people asked for after the first series. So there we go. So good old EVX Gen 2, uh, well, EVX turned into the Gen 2. These were very, very popular, the original EVXs. It's a really nice, well-built scope. Uh, I think that's going to go really well. Nearly forgot, you can get these in first and second focal plane. Optizan haven't finished there. You've got a new range of scopes, and these are called the ES. And they come out in 10 by 44, 3 to 12 by 44, or 4 to 16 by 44. Now, difference here is that you've got the cap turrets. So this is more of going to be something like for out in the field for your long range shooter. And Optizan have got a new reticle as well, which I'll put on the screen now. Um, and that is really going to help you with that long range shooting. And they've added some more windage points and things like that. So that's a nice development as well. But these lovely cap turrets, which are ideal, obviously, for, for, your, for your hunting. You've also got an illuminated reticule on the side and your nice parallax as well. And you've got the same sort of styling on the turrets and the dial as you have on the, on the compact scope, but this is just a bigger version. And this is gonna come in first and second focal plane as well. Here we are then on the Ergo stand, and in particular, the Ergo Air part of the stand. Now, Ergo Air make interchangeable grips for chassis rifles all things like tactical rifles like the FX Impact and the Maverick and the Sabre Tactical Chassis and other guns out there that have this ability to change the grips over. You can probably put an Ergo Air Grip on it. You need that AR fitting, but it is very, very simple. Normally one bolt straight up through the middle. And I'm gonna let you into a little secret. The most important bit that grips your rifle, the bit you carry your rifle with, is your hand so the grip is super important and if you use an ergo air grip as opposed to a standard factory grip you will notice the difference it's more tactile it's probably bigger in the palm and you don't have to squeeze your hand quite so much so it does actually make the carrying and the use of your rifle a lot easier and probably not quite so much strain on your hand particularly if you're out doing a lot of walking in the field. They come in different styles. You've got the traditional style with the flat top, or you've got the beaver tail with the little curl at the back, or you've got the zero angle grips as well, which are becoming very, very popular, particularly in the PRS market. So there you go. Available from Airgun 101 Shop in the UK, if you want one, and also from all good retailers in the USA. But the Ergo Air grips are fantastic and you'll know it's good because you'll put your hand around it and you'll go, ooh, that feels a little bit different. 
and that's why they're so popular. Before I finish on the Ergo Air stand, there's these. These are Picatinny rail protectors. It is the most simple product I've seen at the show and it is probably one of the most useful. It comes in different shapes and sizes, different amounts in the packets and you can get different colours. And what you can do is you can either cut them down or by the length required and you clip them over your empty space on your Picatinny rail and it takes away the sharp edges and stops you doing any bit of scratching or anything like that. It's very, very clever and very, very simple. But if you want to protect your Picatinny rail and your rifle, and you want to take away those sharp edges, there it is. And it's just a few pounds. And again, they're available at Agon 101 Shop. It's simple. And why has it not been thought of before? Here on the Krell stand, I got information is a little sparse. so. Just bear with me because I'm sort of learning as we go along here what we see. But there's a couple of things I've spotted. Firstly, if I lift this up, you're going to like this because I rather like it. Look at this. Let's fit that in. That is the Crow Empire and it's a laminate stock version. Look at that. Now that is really, really short. I know very little about it, I've got to be honest with you. Um, but just that stock and how that presents, uh, that's a wall piece right there. I would be terrified of scratching that, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And it's not just that one that they do it with. Um, yeah, they do the longer version as well. Look, look at those. Look at those. They are lovely. Okay, now I'm going to cheat, as I always do, and I'm going to read the crib sheet and see what it says about them. So just give me a second. Okay, so basically from what I can glean, that's a 33 centimetre barrel and that's a 48 centimetre barrel. And you've got a cylinder on there and you've got an aluminium bottle on there. The action and everything else looks pretty much the same. Um, it's just that's like the super stubby version. <laughs> that is rather nice. I, I gotta say that, that, is, that is a beauty. Um, yeah, Kral Arms, very popular, uh, people love these, uh, they're great for sort of uh, tinkering and tuning and uh, uh, buying one and then sort of making it your own, um, but that does look very, very nice. And that is the Kral Puncture Empire, and I'll put the crib sheet, what I can see on the screen, so you know what I do, uh, but there we go, it's very nice. I thought I'd finished with the blue laminate, but I've spotted something else. an NP02 with an orange laminate stock. Look at that, now that's very nice as well. Again, these are super popular, people out there that do love these. Uh, it's got that, you know, big bottle at the back, side lever system, uh, nice rugged little air gun. <laughs> and they've gone and put a really pretty laminate stock on it. Very nice. Um, yeah, again, maybe a bit of a war piece. I'm always terrified of scratching laminate but I do, because I'm a bit of a horror like that. But yeah, those look really, really nice. You're on a journey with me here. We're all learning on the crowd stand. I've looked at the catalog and I see this. Now this looks very nice as well, but I've looked at the catalog to try and get some information. What am I seeing? Well, this is called the Shadow. I've never seen this one before. What I'm looking at is a folding stock. which okay there you go so there's a little folding stock on there like that there's a little stiff but a little stiff so you've got the shadow from the catalog i can see that that's an aluminium bottle but you can as an option have a carbon fiber fiber carbon fiber bottle it's been a long week you've got side lever action uh bottle pressure gauge there, regulator pressure underneath, I think. I don't see anywhere that you can adjust that regulator. And I have a feeling that that round there is probably going to release the barrel. I will be honest with you, um, I walked onto the ground stand and I had to look at the book. So yeah, they're lovely. Uh, 
but I really can't tell you a lot about it because I haven't been told anything about it. But there we go, uh, adjustable cheek piece, safety fire, there we go. Looks fantastic, looks really good. Um, everyone's doing stuff like this nowadays. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to say anything and then it'd be wrong and someone tell me off. So there you go, there's a nice pretty picture of it, the crowd shadow. That's it, but before I go, things do not always go to plan in Vegas. So thank you to the hotel security team who came to my rescue when an unknown man entered my hotel room at 4 p.m. on Saturday. I promised to thank them. They know who they are. Also, to the man from the defense industry on my flight going to Las Vegas from Heathrow, he was sitting in 22K on Monday the 16th of January, flight BA275. You are the biggest horses on this planet and you need to learn how to behave on a flight i got that off my chest thanks for watching see you soon bye bye